Hey there fans, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to a toy review. Today we are gonna take a look at Legacy Skyquake. Uh, as you guys know, I'm not a big fan of the Legacy line. Uh, I, you know, on the uh, last project update, uh, I showed the uh, three uh, Prime Universe figures that I got from the Legacy line and I wasn't impressed with any one of them to be quite frank. And I'm hoping and I'm hopeful that uh, this time around uh, I'll get something that's uh, that's worthy of, of actually purchasing and displaying on your shelf and so on and so forth. So uh, a lot of you guys convinced me that uh, Skyquake was good and obviously if Skyquake is good, Dreadwing, the, the repaint, is going to be just as good as well. So I'll look forward to picking that up whenever that comes out. But let's go ahead and get into this particular action figure. As you can see right here, we've got some really nice, uh, you know, we got a really nice pose of the action figure, right? Right uh, down in the center there, got his uh, transform transformed version uh, up at the top upper left hand corner right of our screen. Uh, the legacy logo underneath, Eg legacy evolution, right? And then you've got the transformer logo on the side. Let's go ahead and see what we've got here on the side. So we got some nice artwork there. We've got, as you can see, we've got Leo Prime. This looks like it's the face of uh, Nemesis Prime. Uh, you've got the couple of Junkions down at the bottom. That's pretty cool. You've got uh, the Dinobots over here. And I think this is Skids uh, right there. So really, uh, really nice illustration there. Turning it on over to the other side. And you can see here, the packaging comes at an angle. There's like an angle right here where you can see uh, Skyquake's face. Very different looking than the Prime Universe, right? Prime Universe, the faces of Prime Universe characters are very unique. Uh, they're not as blocky as uh, G1. And the legacy stuff tends to mimic the G1 uh, aesthetics of an action figure. So that's, that's why you can see there's a difference in the way that the face looks. But again, you've got the uh, face right here, and you've got the uh, image, a close-up image of uh, jet mode right there. Let's flip it on over to the back. As you can see here, we've got the action figure itself. And as you can see here, we've got a transform with this little mini gun. Really nice. You've got the uh, jet mode right here. And then you've got, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's another transformer. It looks like it's another transformer that can combine. I don't know. It's not a Minicon. It's too big to be a Minicon. I don't know. You guys let me know. What, what is this at, at the top here? Who is that? Um, it says Needle Nose. Hmm. You, must be a character. I just I, I, I didn't even know about that gimmick about maybe Needle Nose sitting on top of Skyquake. I don't know. Um, gosh, my, my, my G1 memory is really fuzzy. I don't, I don't ever think I remember seeing a Skyquake in G1. And I don't really know much about, about it if there is. Uh, must have been like one of those obscure characters that, you know, wasn't mainstream. But, uh, but yeah, that's so far what we've got on the box. Again, the logo with the, uh, with the barcode at the top, Legacy Evolution. And at the bottom, you got all the mumbo jumbo nobody really pays attention to with the barcode. All right, so let's crack this bad boy open. Let's see what, uh, what he looks like inside. All right, so here we have the figure out of the package, and as you can see, looks pretty nice. Um, really, like, I, I don't even know what type of a jet this is. I don't know if I would consider it a Cybertronian jet, an Earth jet. Um, it's, it's definitely something that looks futuristic. Um, so, but pretty cool, pretty nice. You've got a nice amount of detail going all around. I mean, this, this is one cool uh, looking plane. As a matter of fact, I really like uh, the jet mode. One of the biggest criticisms that I have of uh, flying uh, transformers is all the kibble that you see underneath. Um, it drives me crazy and I get it. There's not much you can do with that. I think so far the best figure that I have is MP Starscream. Um, the way that they designed that character, everything's concealed, or it looks like it's concealed. Like it, it doesn't look like the robot body underneath, and then and then the plane up top, <laughs> right? It, I mean, it looks like you know a, a one solid plane. So to see this character, the you know the underbelly of this of this jet, 
Uh, it's really nice. I really do like it. You can't tell that there's a robot in here, which is, you know, massive, you know, brownie points in my opinion. So it looks really cool all the way around. I really do like it. Uh, as far as accessories go, it doesn't come with a whole lot. I'll just grab them real quick. So as far as the accessories go, he's got his mini gun that goes underneath the belly. Looks kind of weird the way that it's sitting there. It almost feels like it's at an angle. Feels like it doesn't even belong there. But as you can see here, put it underneath there and you can see there. Nah, doesn't really do it for me, but you know, it is what it is. And then, and then this is the, the sword that, it, you know, when he's in robot mode. I don't know if this can actually be put anywhere. Um, I don't see any spots for it. So it, it might fit somewhere if I play around with it, but it might not, right? And then I guess you got all these other peg holes that you can put, you know, this mini gun in as well. You know, you can play around with it. Yeah, see, so you can put it on there, right? Maybe not in the center, but maybe put it, you know, off to the side here. Maybe if somebody's selling a second one on eBay, you can pick that up and you could have two mini guns there. Pretty, pretty cool at that point, right? And then you've got the uh, the landing gears, which is nice, right? I think whenever planes come with landing gears, that's just another extra. So not so bad, looking good. I'm liking the figure so far. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and transform him and see what he looks in robot mode. All right, and here we have Skyquake transformed in robot mode. And I've got to say, I was able to transform this without uh, using the instructions. I double checked the instructions to make sure that I did it right uh, once I did. Uh, overall, wasn't very difficult to be quite honest with you, which I personally like because I don't, I don't, you know, like Bulkhead, for example, or, or RC, I don't think I've even been able to transform RC completely without using the, uh, the instructions and so on and so forth. And so what it does is it, it, it like if it's too complicated, I, I just, I, I don't know, I kind of give up on it. That's just me. Some people like the challenge. Hey, that's, that's great. Um, I, you know, like I said, I was able to transform it. It's self-explanatory. I, I, you know what? I really got to commend uh, the people at Hasbro with this one because the, the engineering is, I, ha I don't think I've ever seen a jet like this. And like I said at the, at the beginning, the fact that they were able to hide all the robot kibble, um, it, it to me, that's like top quality. Now, what I didn't know and I didn't realize, I had to look up the different uh, class levels, is that this is a leader class, not a Voyager class. So it's bigger. And due to that fact, that's probably why so much uh, accuracy or so much ingenuity went into it, that they were able to do so much with it. They were able to make it look like a jet and not like a plane up top and a robot underneath, right? Or whatever, whatever is uh, peeking out uh, from the robot. So that makes a whole lot of sense to me, and, and it's one of the reasons why I was uh, I was thinking about uh, getting uh, this particular figure. The the last three that I got really just made me not want to get anything else. Um, but then I, I looked at this and I, I thought it was Voyager and I said even with Voyager you still get a good figure But the fact that this is a, a, a leader class. Wow, it's just phenomenal really good figure overall I I you know my hats off again to the production team. Uh, they did a really nice job As far as uh, QC goes, I didn't have any QC issues uh, Paint app everywhere is beautiful. It's spread. It's you know, no chipping. No nothing came out disfigured or discolored um, nice uh, green all around right very uh, classic uh, look to the uh, prime show right uh, the gunmetal gray really works in in areas uh, really really nice figure overall um, as far as the um, the look goes I mean he just looks phenomenal I really don't have anything uh, bad to say as far as the look goes uh, as far as the articulation goes You've got, you know, I, I, again, I really like these ratchet because what it does is it prevents uh, the legs from being loose and the legs splitting. I've gone over it before with certain action figures where, you know, you pose it and it just, the legs just don't hold, right? So you've got that pretty much, you can hear that ratchet sound, right? You've got that in the shoulders. You've got that, well, here in the, in the leg, right? Um, really solid when it comes to um, you know, posability or 
or you know yeah i mean that that's what it helps for posability now the one thing i am going to say i can't stand it <laughs> meaning i can't stand the figure there's so much uh weight back here that these little these little uh, jet engines back here they don't really do enough to hold the figure in place and so what happens is even if i lean the character forward well actually if i lean it forward like that but really we, we don't normally do that right when we pose a character up we like you know put him in some type of action pose or something like that and you could see right here he's got so much kibble in the back and and the kibbles i mean you expect this type of kibble for a character in the back right that, that i mean a character that flies right you, you got to have the wings in the back and so on and so forth but i really you know with you got it I, if I bend him forward like that, now he now he'll stand, right? But he looks weird, right? So he needs to stand. And, and to be quite honest with you, look, I have to open up the back here. The the midsection has to come off of its locked position in order for that to happen. If I and if I put it back to the same spot again, it, it, he falls. So that's my biggest biggest gripe with this particular action figure. Just does not stand you're gonna need you're gonna you're definitely gonna need some something to uh to make it stand on right um another thing that i didn't like is you could see right here this open spot this is where i had to check the instructions right to see if uh if i was doing it right or not i mean it might be good that you can swing your arm all the way across i don't really like the fact that that's not in place and then these wings, when they lock, they're supposed to lock into this. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not. But there's a um, there's a spot right here where this this these wings that are levered are supposed to clip into, and it's just not clipping in. Right? It'll it'll come right back out the minute I pose it. So uh, those are my two biggest gripes uh, with this particular action figure. Uh, mm, you know little bit challenging when it comes to that looks great looks phenomenal um let's see if we can go ahead and, and you know pose them up with his accessories all right so here we've got the figure all posed up with his uh, minigun the minigun is really nice i really like the sculpting on the minigun the only thing i could have uh, or i would have uh, preferred is if the you know the actual gun rotates but that's just a minor to be honest with you i'm just nitpicking uh you could see here the nice uh, level of detail. The sword acts as an ammo pack down here. So you can see that it actually comes out, right? So I'm gonna try and see if I can stand. So I'm using this platform here to hold him back so uh, so that he can stand up. But what, you, what you've got here is with this, uh, with this thing here, you've got a little sword that comes out and this will go into his hand and we'll see it'll be the sword. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's all one solid color. Um, not a fan of it, but pretty nifty gimmick that it, it bends into it and it stores into the gun itself at the bottom. Um, not bad as far as accessories. Um, be nice if I had like some type of fire, uh, like blasting effect out of that as an addition. Um, but overall, I mean, it, it, it you know it's coming with the base. It comes with a, a gun. And it comes with a sword. Can't complain about that, right? So overall, really nice detail on on the on the minigun. It has a spot where obviously you can he can hold it the way he he did in the show, right? You got one hand here, one hand here, and uh, so here's the interesting part. Remember that shoulder piece that I was talking about right here? So it due to the fact that it doesn't clip into anything, it allows for the character to hold the gun. Maybe that's why they did it. And I could I could totally understand if that's the case, which I do think that is going to be the case because I can't I don't think you can make the action figure's arm uh, go that far across the torso uh, or the uh, the upper body right in it, you know to hold that. So I do think that's that was the uh, intention behind that. So overall, not too bad. All right, so here we've got. Here we've got Legacy Skyquake next to Prime Skyquake. Oh, he almost fell. Did you see that? He almost fell again. That's driving me nuts. I can't stand that. And then we've got here Dreadwing, which easily stands. Now, 
Now, you look at the two of them, right, side by side, and you can see that there's a huge size difference, right? And that's because um, Legacy is a, a leader class and uh, the Prime was a Voyager class. But I, I, you know, you got to look at the action figures when you compare the two of them together side by side. Dreadwing is uh, from the Prime universe is a nice figure uh, overall. It really, really was a nice figure. I think it's one of the best figures from the line, to be quite frank. I think, I think, uh, you know, um, I think all the all the Decepticons or, or almost all, I should say, uh, Dreadwing obviously uh, and Skyquake. Um, I think uh, Shockwave. And Megatron were the were the the best action figures to come out of that line as far as their posability, as far as like you know everything that, that we're looking for, um, you know uh, sturdiness and and all those different things, right? And the transformation and so on and so forth. I think those were the best ones. Um, but you can see here that that it's they're they're two really nice figures, just different. I can't tell you which one I like more um, because I've been a big fan. I, I will tell you that there are some rubber pieces uh, on this action figure, right? You can see right here, this is rubber. I don't know why. Um, the knees uh, have rubber on them as well. I'm not sure why. Um, so there's certain things that, uh, that I'm not too crazy about on this, right? So a little bit of improvement as far as that goes. But, but, I like the sword on this Skyquake more so than the other Skyquake. I like his sword better than his sword. Now, what I like, I don't know what this is. This is some type of gimmick. This is supposed to be his, his well, I knocked him down. He didn't fall down, I knocked him down. <laughs> um, let's see if I can get him to stand now. Okay, so, so this is some type of transformation gimmick. So you could see here, and I don't know why this one's not stained, but here, here's his minigun, which this looks, Terrible in comparison. So I really do like this version much, much better than this. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of gimmicks, to be honest with you. Uh, just give me a gun. Give me either a a blast effect or a gun that'll that'll launch some type of a projectile, right? I, I actually do like those when you launch projectiles. Um, one thing I used to do with my with my son, the the oldest one, when he was like uh, five, uh, we used to we used to have. Um, he used to have a playset, uh, an Imaginex playset, and we had a castle, and you had to build. It was pretty cool, right? Um, we got a bunch of them. We got some ogres, some soldiers. So we both built a, a castle on each side, and uh, they came with uh, catapults that threw little, you know, little rocks, and uh, and uh, and some that had like a, a like a bow and arrow, plastic bow and arrow, right? So what we would do is we'd line them up. And we'd have to aim and we shoot the projectiles trying to knock down each one of the little soldiers. So one of my favorite pastimes with uh, with my son. Um, that's why I like projectiles so much, right? So I would have preferred a projectile shooting gun versus uh, this thing here, which I don't like. I like that much better. Um, so, yeah. So between the two action figures, again, I think they're, they're just too different. Again, this legacy has a lot of G1 aspects to it as far as the look, the way that it looks. And then this is a straight up prime. I, I'm, I, I mean, as far as robot goes, I like them both. But I think this, this one's a little bit sturdier, to be quite frank. Look, I don't have any issues. Nothing. Boom, boom, boom. Right there. If I want to pose them up, no problem. This guy, I'm having some problem posing him up. To be honest with you, his posability is not there. Every time I've got to, I've got to disconnect this back here in order to get him to stand, and then when it clicks back in, watch, he falls over. So you know, as far as the legacy line goes, it's 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 not that great. Um, it has its opportunities. I think in comparison to all the other, oh look, I got him to stand. In comparison, not a great pose. Uh, in comparison to the other prime action figures from this line, this one's by far the best one. Um, is it is it the uh, is it the best action figure I've ever had? No. Um, I do, however, like the the jet mode and the way that it transforms. I like the transformation of the jet mode, the engineering behind it, and I like the way the jet mode looks. So I think I think. If this were, if it were me, and I'm gonna display this guy, I'd probably display him in jet mode. To be quite honest with you. 
All right, and I, I did, actually decided to bring out the uh, APC, uh, you know, Prime version of Optimus Prime. So you can see here they scale pretty nicely. Uh, Skyquake is a little bit bigger, which is perfectly fine. I mean, it, in the show they look like they were almost the same height, but I'm okay with Skyquake being bigger because jets are usually bigger than cars and trucks and whatnot. So, uh, you know, as far as that goes, I'm not, I'm not upset about it. As a matter of fact, they scale really, really nice. And uh, you know, even though this is a prime version and this is a legacy version, they, they actually don't look too bad at all. So, um, so yeah, if you don't have this figure, uh, pairs up nice if you wish. You know, the fact that we've got this figure now makes me want a like masterpiece version of the Transformers Prime. As a matter of fact, I, I, I have been um, wanting a masterpiece version of all the Prime figures, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't understand why we can't have that, but possibly because the, you know, it's, it's just not there. You know, the demand isn't there. But as you can see, pretty nice. What I like to do is I like to switch them out now with the Combiner Wars Optimus Prime, because this is one of actually my favorite Optimus Primes as well as far as action figures go. Had this one displayed for a long time on my desk until my desk got jam packed. So as you can see here, now I really do like the way these two guys are, are pairing up as well. As you can see here, so a really nice figure. If you guys don't have that figure, uh, I recommend that figure as well. I know this is a Skyquake review, but, uh, but this Optimus Prime is really nice as well. I really like the way he uh, they they match up with one another So you can see that they're they're almost the same size as well Which is pretty rare because this is not a leader class. This is a Voyager class if, if I'm not mistaken But as you can see here not much of a height difference there actually they scale really really nice I, As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna scale these two guys together uh, on my desk <laughs> they're battling it out so so yeah guys that's uh that's my review of uh, legacy skyquake again I, I really recommend the figure um you know minor gripes uh the biggest one is obviously the standing of it it does not uh like you have to have a stand unfortunately you can't just uh you know look how easily i did three different action figures i stood them up no no issues there and with that character i'm afraid to move him around because he's going to keep falling so um definitely definitely uh, have a stand if you decide to pick up this figure and also i do think that as far as like posability goes it is a little bit challenging the way the uh waist articulation works um you know i don't uh I'm, you know, this clicking aspect here. See that? See how easy that just comes apart? And then it, it clicks in, but it's not a solid click either. Look. So those are my two biggest gripes with this figure. Uh, other than that, though, it's a solid figure. I honestly, I'll, I'll give it an eight uh, overall. Why? Because, uh, you know, I really like it in jet mode. Phenomenal piece in jet mode. Uh, the way that it transforms, the engineering behind it is very unique. I don't think I've ever seen that type of engineering before. And um, I hope that they continue to make jets like that. Uh, and then, you know, obviously they can uh, improve on it. But, uh, but guys, that's pretty much it for this review. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, till next time, till all are one. Peace out. Bye-bye.